All right, hello everybody. Uh, I know it's been a bit, but my capture card has finally come here. Um, it actually got here on the 24th, so the day before Christmas. Yeah, funny enough, it wasn't even a Christmas present. It just happened to come around that time. It was supposed to come a lot earlier, but it got delayed. So, but no, we have it now. So today, my first tutorial is going to be a uh, on the mod injector, the Wii U Minecraft mod injector. It is a great application that has access to hundreds of different mods for Minecraft Wii U. Um, and yeah, it, it just it is really, really great. I use it quite often um, in conjunction with some other mods that I'll be doing tutorials on in the future, most likely. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is type in Wii U Mod Injector. And that should take us to right here. We want to click on right here. Um, and we click right here, and we want to get the exe file. That is the application which we are going to be using. So I already have it, um, so I'm not going to be booting into it or anything uh, from right here, but basically what you do is just click on here, and it will take you through the setup, and you can get yourself the Wii Mod Injector. So that is, yeah, pretty much everything you have to do on the computer until you get the ap actual application running. So, yeah, I'll go from that point. Alright, so here we are on the Wii U, and this is the Wii U steps for it. So the first thing you want to do is go to the internet browser. Um, now, this is how you're going to do Homebrew, because um, you need Homebrew to get into this application. Um, but I noticed that a lot of people don't have the app, and the app can kind of get complicated sometimes. Uh, especially if you if you use HacksG, which I do, because you have to actually spend money. Um, so that's uh, why I'm doing the internet browser method, because anybody can do this really quickly um, if you don't need the app. So where you're going to go is this really great site called WiiUexploit.xyz. W-I-I-U-E-X-P-L-O-I-T dot X-Y-Z. And here we are. We're just going to click Run Exploit. And that can take us where we need to go. which is the homebrew launcher. Taking a bit here, but yeah, here we are. So um, for people who don't already have TCP Gecko, you're just gonna go into the homebrew app store. Um, I already have it, so I'll just show where it is and everything. Um, so yeah, for, for you first timers of using homebrew, all you really do is just that this is just a massive hub for a bunch of different mods. Um, but yeah, we can do a quick search right here. We search TCP, TCP Geckos right here. I have it installed, but you just click A right here and it will install it for you. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for right here. So we just click the home button. Actually, no, we don't click the home button. We click minus, I forgot. <laughs> minus to get out of the out of there um, and so yeah once you have TCP gecko installed you are going to click right here and click load um, and your IP should should be at the top there you will want to take note of that so I recommend writing that down somewhere um, yeah I'll probably blur out mine <laughs> and then you just press X and that should take you back to the Wii U menu So yeah, here we are. Um, once we're here, we are just going to boot up Minecraft as normal. So yeah, as this boots up, you'll want to get the mod injector up and running um, to get all the mods. Uh, right here, and I'll just demonstrate some of the best ones in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I'll make a new world for that purpose. I'll make a creative, also have it be offline so random people don't come joining. I'll make a super flat.
So yeah, one of the best um, features of the mod injector, in my opinion, is commands. So I will demonstrate some of, some of those right now. So there are just a bunch of different tabs. You have to connect your IP. That's This is where your IP goes. You just put it in right here and click connect. Then it connects to your Wii U once you do the TCP gecko thing. Um, but yeah, there's just a bunch of tabs with a bunch of different mods that you can enable. Um, my favorite has to be commands because uh, you can just get a bunch of illegal blocks this way. I'll demonstrate some of those right now. So for the item ID, um, each block in Minecraft has a specific ID. You can find those if you click right here. Um, but I just have all the best ones memorized. So for example, regular command blocks are 137. Mm -hmm. The item amount is obviously just the amount of items that you want. Um, they do not stack past 64. So for example, if you were to put in 100, it would give you a stack in a bit. Um, it wouldn't stack it as a hundred. Um, data value. So the data value of an item is at default zero. So most, most things will just be zero. Um, but for things like terracotta or wool where there's multiple variants, the data value will, they'll still have the same, uh, item ID, but they'll just have different data values, like one and two and whatever. And you can find all of those right here. Um, but yeah, I'll just do data value zero and yeah. Let's show this. You should click slash give once you have all that filled out. And we have command blocks right here. Um, they do not work, sadly. Uh, for some reason, they're in the code of the game, but you can't actually do commands. So these are more for just building purposes or showing off or whatever. Um, some of the other great IDs are um, 9 gives you water source blocks, which you can technically get with a glitch, but you can also get them here if you want. 11 is lava source blocks. Um, 210 is purple command blocks, 211 is green command blocks, 166 are barriers, that's probably the most useful one because you can actually like really use this in building, it's really useful. If you hold it, you can see the barriers, if you don't hold a barrier, then you can't see them. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for slash give. Uh, let's move on, we have slash enchant. You can't uh, do enchantments past the vanilla enchantment. You, to get better enchantments, you have to use the, um, the Universal Minecraft Editor, which I might do a tutorial on at some point, so uh, be excited for that, I guess. But no. Um, so for example, Sharpness 5, you can only do it like as the max of Sharpness 5. If you hold the item in your hand that you want to be enchanted, you can give it an enchantment. Um, slash time obviously sets the time. This is very unstable though. It could, it could crash your game quite a bit of the time So I recommend just using host options for that slash kill kills you Just makes you fall out of the world <laughs> um, And you get a funny little death message when you get back in ouch that looked like it hurt uh, So that's it for that um, toggle downfall doesn't really do anything except for um, messing with tell raw, so I'll show tell raw right now. Um, tell raw, you can literally just put in a chat message, enter name. Uh, I bet it makes it so you can just send a message to one specific person. I've never really messed around with it, but right here you can just let's just do LOL, and as you see, LOL got into the chat right there. Um, but that leads us to uh, slash tunnel downfall. If you click that. Um, I think normally in like Java and whatever, just the normal versions of the game, it makes it so rain comes down. But for some reason it's bugged here and it just repeats slash tell raw. So not really that useful. Slash world spawn, obviously such world spawn. Default game mode, let you change your game mode if you want. Enter XP, that, that, that one's pretty fun. For the sake of this video, let's do 69, 420, let's do it. <laughs> give levels, you can also do give XP. Um, let's turn our game mode into survival. As you can get 69, 420 levels. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the commands tab. You can also do commands in mini games if you want to. Um, so yeah, that's that's an option. You can only be the host though if you want to do commands in mini games. And also, if you're not the host in like a friends game or whatever, uh, you have to be moderator. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, players and items. Go to the players and items tab. There's a lot of fun things here. Um, you may notice that a lot of these, uh, well, all of these are either, uh, blue or orange. Orange means you can only use these mods when you're the host of the game, and blue means you can use these wherever. So, that's something to keep in mind. Um, crafting table anywhere. 
it makes it so that crafting inventory uh, that you open up without being in the crafting table, it makes it so it's a crafting table. Craft anything, you can craft anything without needing the necessary materials. So those two combined make it really OP. Developer mode makes it so you can like vote for a better version of the map um, in battle minigame. So for example, Cavern normally just has small and large variants of the map. Uh, you can also, with, with developer mode enabled, you can vote for a huge variant of the map that went unused during development. But for some reason, it doesn't actually work and just leaves you in the lobby when you vote for it. So if you want to mess around in the lobby for a bit, you can just vote for the huge variant. Um, developer mode, I, I think it, I don't remember what, what else it does, but I feel like it did something else. Um, so yeah, uh, hidden game modes unlocked, that's really fun. Here, I'll show what that does real quick. We now have more game modes. We can be in spectator, um, and we can be in the battle mini game mode when you're in the lobby, meaning you can't break stuff or whatever. So yeah, that's pretty fun. Um, what else do we got in here? Oh yeah, you can modify your speed scale. This also modifies the scale, the speed scale of animals and just other mobs, which makes it really funny. Um, so yeah, you got that. And I think that's basically all the best things here. There's a lot of good stuff here. Oh yeah, item of undying, that's really fun. It makes it so any item that you hold acts as a totem of undying if you die. Unlimited totems gives you, well, unlimited totems. Um, yeah, dual wield any item, that's fun. Uh, the other item in your uh, offhand is not usable though, so it's just there for show. Oh yeah, the last fun one is wear anything. Wear anything is quite fun. It makes it so you can wear anything. So here, let's show that right now. Um, it only shows it on your head, but, yeah. <laughs> Look at me. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this tab. Now let's move on to the next tab. Um, we have world and entities right here. So there is some really fun things right here. Zombie tower, I will demonstrate what that does right now. Let's get some zombie spawn. Right here. Yeah, it literally just makes it so they stack on top of each other, which is really fun, so. <laughs> um, and you can make those towers really big, too, if you want to, so. Yeah, that's something right there. You can also sunproof mobs, making it so zombies don't burn and skeletons don't burn and things like that. Well, it shows the burning animation, but it just doesn't do them any damage. Leash any mobs, that's really fun. You can use a lead on any mob you want to. You can also make it so the entity spawn limit is uncapped, which makes it really laggy, but it's fun <laughs> if you want to do that. Um, See, so yeah, you just got a bunch of fun things right here. You can edit the world generation. I'll show that real quick. Freezing world is really fun. It turns everything into ice. Uh, if you leave it running, though, it gets really laggy. So, but no, in a non-super flat world, it will literally just turn everything into ice. All the trees, all the villager houses, everything into ice. Uh, so it makes it lag pretty quickly, but it's it's fun. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it for this tab, all the best things in there. General game, you can make it so you have host options, which isn't really useful if you're already the host of a game. But in battle mini game, it's basically, well, or just any mini games in general, this is really awesome because you can change your game mode and stuff like that. Um, disable permanent kicks. I will give a warning on this one. Uh, do not have this enabled um, unless you want your mic permanently turned off until you turn on, turn off your Wii U. Um, so yeah, if, if you get kicked from a game um, and turn it back on, your mic will be temporarily muted until you turn off your console again. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend having this on. Um, prevent being kicked gives you anti-kick. There's no bad side effects to this one, so feel free to use that. All DLC unlocked is great. You don't, you don't need to pay for any DLC. You can just get it all for free. Um, bypass friends only. You can join other people's games that have friends of friends off. Uh, yeah. So, Achievement Editor is pretty awesome. Um, it makes it so you can swap any achievement with another achievement. So, for example, uh, making a crafting table for the first time, you could swap the things needed to get that achievement for a really insane achievement. 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty fun. Map text editor crashes your game. Don't use it. Just a little tip there. Um, that's pretty much it for this tab. Now we go to mini games. You can get a bunch of crap right here. Now I will say, please do not abuse these guys. Like I, I've, I've joined too many games where people are just jerks with their mods and it just makes it an unfun experience for literally everybody else but them. So yeah, don't, don't, don't be a jerk with these. I recommend if you're going to have mods and mini games, be the host. Um, so people can leave and join the game at their leisure and don't just go ruin somebody else's game. Um, so yeah, but yeah, the things you have here are all permissions. You can do things like mine. TNT griefing griefs the map. Um, TNT actually griefs the map because that's off by default. Always damaged makes it so you just always take damage at like the same rate as poison would. Um, disabled kill bar kill ugh, I can't talk today. Disabled kill barriers makes it so you can go past the barrier, which is pretty fun. Squeak infinitely is quite annoying. You're in spectator and you can just spam the bat squeak. No position log makes it so you can move before the countdown, allow mobs. This actually doesn't work. Um, you don't even need this enabled to be allowed to spawn shulkers and slimes in minigames already, but if you do have this enabled, it doesn't change anything. You can still only spawn shulkers and slimes. Liquids can convert, makes it so you can have like obsidian and cobblestone in battle minigame, like lava and water will go together to make those. Solo makes it so you can play... Um, Mini game solo if you want. Same thing with required players. You can make it so it's one. You could also make it. It's like you can also make it be like ninety nine if you want to. Just stay in the lobby. Um, okay, that's pretty much it for here. Then we just go to um, battle. These are ones exclusively for battle mini game. You can make it so the game never ends. You can also just end the game conveniently right here. Uh, map size. This doesn't really. Well, I don't know. I've never really messed with this because there's not really any reason to because you can just vote for it already. Uh, chest refill interval, this one's really fun. You can make it be really small, so they make it to, so they just infinitely refill until the chests are full, or make it 99, so they like hardly ever refill. Tumble, I never really messed with these, but apparently you can unlock your inventory and things like that. Glide, you can modify the uh, ring score value, so you can make it so you have like 100 points for a single ring if you want to. Commands, we've already been through that, and that is pretty much it. All the best mods on this thing but yeah there there are a bunch of other things and i just recommend messing around with this for a long time um so yeah that's about it i hope this was useful to people uh certainly was to me i absolutely abused this thing so yeah have fun with it and see you